This is part six of a six-part series that describes the field and laboratory techniques used to determine why there was intercoat delamination of a coating system applied to a concrete floor. Each part is standalone, but when viewed in order, they present the key findings from an actual project. The six segments in the series are project familiarization and interview, field moisture detection, field coating thickness with a took gauge, field adhesion testing with both knife and tensile, field microscopic examination and sample collection, and finally the laboratory forensic analysis. This video addresses part six. When the samples are received by the laboratory, they should be accompanied with a completed chain of custody form. The chain of custody should include descriptions of the samples, the locations where each was obtained, and the analytical testing requested for each sample. Not only does it help to improve communication with the laboratory, but it also provides a tracking mechanism for the handling of the samples from collection in the field to receipt in the laboratory. In addition to samples from the field, the laboratory contacted the coating manufacturer for wet control samples of the materials specified for use. It's always helpful for the laboratory to talk with the field investigator whenever possible, because probing questions often lead to the disclosure of additional information that can be of great value to the investigation. A wide array of laboratory instruments are available to analyze the samples. The battery of tests selected for the evaluation of one failure will often be different than those selected for another. The expertise of the laboratory, discussions with the field consultant, and expectations of the client representative are used to determine the appropriate mix. And quite often, the results of the initial analysis leads the investigation down a new path requiring the use of other instruments that were not initially considered. In this case, detailed microscopic examination was requested, along with infrared spectroscopy, ion chromatography, and gas chromatography mass spectroscopy. Detailed microscopic examination was performed to determine the number and thickness of the coating layers, as well as to determine the plane of failure, and to look for the presence of other contamination or objectionable properties. The laboratory microscopic examination revealed the presence of five coats. Often when coating layers of the same color are applied in succession, it is difficult to differentiate between two layers of the same product. To this end, while only one clear coat was observed in the cross section, it is likely this layer is composed of both of the reportedly applied clear top coat layers. The thicknesses of the coating layers were measured and were determined to be in accordance with the manufacturer's recommended thickness ranges and no differences were found between the thicknesses in failing and non-failing areas. The microscopic analysis showed the clear coats were desponding from the beige with some beige discoloration on the back side. No evidence of dirt or debris was detected at the failing interface. The microscopic examination also showed foaming through the clear coat in a sample taken from the area near the door. During the interview, it was noted that the door was left open to increase ventilation during the application of the top coat. However, this was done on a day when it was raining. Fourier Transform Infrared Spectroscopy, or FTIR, was also used. FTIR is an analytical technique that can be used for compositional analysis of coatings. The absorbance of infrared radiation that excites molecules from the ground vibrational state to a higher excited vibrational state provides information about molecular composition. The vibrational patterns produce a graph called a spectrum, seen here. By analyzing the spectrum, a great deal of information regarding the paint sample is revealed, such as generic resin type, potential problems with mixing, evidence of degradation, and more. Just as your fingerprint is unique to you, the spectrum of a particular product is unique to it. While generic resins have similar bands and determined ranges, each product provides a unique spectrum. Two different epoxies will show different spectra even though the bands will be similar. Analysis of the coating system by infrared spectroscopy indicated that the materials used were chemically consistent with laboratory prepared control samples of the specified materials. These results confirmed that the materials used had the same chemical composition as the specified coating system and that the specified materials were not substituted for a different coating system. The laboratory prepared controlled samples were mixed at the proper ratio as well as over catalyzed and under catalyzed mixes to determine if mismixing of the components could have played a role in the failure. The analysis revealed that the samples obtained from the field were consistent with the properly mixed materials and that mismixing was not a concern. Additionally, 
The bottom surface of the failing coating chips were rinsed with solvents and the runoff collected, dried, and the resulting residue was analyzed to look for evidence of organic contamination such as oils or waxes. No presence of organic contamination was detected. Ion chromatography testing was performed to see if the incomplete removal of the cleaning agent used in the field during the application of the new coating may have contributed to the problem. Ion chromatography identifies the presence of certain ions common in salts such as chloride, nitrite, bromide, nitrate, phosphate, and sulfate. The safety data sheet for the cleaning agent utilized prior to coating application indicated that the product was composed of phosphate-containing compounds. The testing revealed no detectable levels of any of the six anions associated with common salts present on the submitted samples. The results of the testing indicated that the residual contamination from the cleaning agent was not the cause of the blistering. The background information and the chain of custody indicated that the clear coats may have been applied before the last beige coat was fully cured. This caused the laboratory to use gas chromatography, mass spectroscopy, or GC mass spec, to examine some of the samples. Some of the samples sent to the lab were in sealed septum vials. The samples had reportedly been placed in the vials immediately upon removal in an attempt to trap any solvents that may be present. GC mass spec was used to determine if any solvents remained in the coating film. The gas chromatograph separates molecules as they travel the length of the column. Each molecule is identified at a specific retention time by a mass spectrometer. The analysis revealed the presence of solvents in the failing samples. The solvents that were consistent with the solvents listed in the safety data sheet, SDS, of the beige epoxy coats. The quantity of solvent materials was higher in areas where blistering occurred as opposed to samples taken from areas that did not experience blistering. The laboratory findings were provided to the field investigator who issued a report with the following observations. Preparation of the existing coating was satisfactory. The new coating was mixed properly. The thickness of the new coating was acceptable. The moisture content of the slab was low and was not a problem. The failure was between the clear urethane and the beige epoxy. A beige discoloration was present on the back side of the urethane. There was no contamination between coats. The failing samples from the back corner of the room contained high concentrations of solvents from the epoxy. The failing samples near the door exhibited foaming of the urethane. In summary, the failure was the combination of two application related problems. The first, the failure in the corner is due to poor ventilation that retarded the cure of the epoxy. The urethane was applied before the epoxy had cured, entrapping solvents and creating a weak plane at the top surface of the beige epoxy. And second, the failure near the door was due to the exposure of the clear urethane coats to moisture when applying the coating while the doors were open and it was raining outside. That's it for part six, which is the conclusion of this series. See other KTA videos in this series for the collection of background information and the types of hands-on field testing that were used to examine this problem. You can also log on to www.ktauniversity.com to see other educational